The tint of the room slowly changes from the shine of the afternoon to the orange of dusk. A clock lazily ticks away the seconds, counting in the background on the verge of hearing. But no matter how long I wait, the outcome cannot be changed. The diminutive playing piece makes a small click against the board. Like a wound spring, Hanako makes her move only moments after mind. Oh, like a wound. Wound. Wow. <laughs> it's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. <laughs> In comparison to my five-minute moves, she seems to know exactly what she wants to do. Me. Uh, again? What does that make this? Three, two? Still needs don't count. Damn. You're getting better at this every day. That, or she's been holding back. I never have thought it would it when I first met her, but she really has a knack for this game. Chess seems to be, have become a popular pastime for the two of us. Hiding away in the tea room, playing a game or two after classes. From here, the students outside can just barely be heard milling about. The everyday noise from below remind me a little of my life before Yamaku. Though, I'm by now well aware that it's a life I've ne I'll never get back to. Fancy another game? I, I have to finish my homework. Oh. Well, I'll see you tomorrow then. But what about this? Hanako points to the tea set surrounding the mostly empty chessboard. Don't worry about it. I've got it. Oh, okay. See you. Later. Han de Hanako departs as they start cleaning up the area. The occasional whistles and cheers from the sporting clubs outside become less frequent, eventually approaching silence. Part of me still wants to be in some kind of team. Since I played soccer and other sports before my accident, I guess it's only normal to feel nostalgic about what I can't do anymore. But I have other reasons than that for my coming here so often. I don't feel so bad about losing that part of myself because of them. Lily is a good friend by now, and it's a small exchange it's the small exchanges I have with Hanako that feel especially dear. The small victories I feel every day as I see more of what she's like under her self-imposed shell. That's why I come here most of all. As I'm putting away the cups and saucers, I hear talking outside the door. Pausing for a moment to listen, I can make out it's Hanako and Lily, and decide to go outside to investigate. Are you quite sure? Uh, I'm sure. Hanako so. turns to see me with a look of mild surprise as she notices my approach. Lily must have caught her just as she was about to leave. Oh my, Hisa was here as well. Afternoon, Lily. What's up? I was hoping, now that I've finished with my class representative duties for the day, that I might have the two of you accompany me for tea at the Shanghai. It would be nice to enjoy ourselves outside of the school for a change. I'd be up for it. I think Aunt Hanako had work to do, th though. It's not all that much. Wonderful. It seems that we're decided, then. I cast my eyes across the cafe as the three of us step in. As usual, there are only a handful of people around at most, and the noise level is a quiet background hum. The hold Lily has on Hanako's arm remains just as it has been for the entire slow walk down the hill to the local town, though it's hard to say for which reason, for Lily's guidance or for Hanako's reassurance. For a moment, Lily removes her arm from Hanako's to retract her cane as Yuko quickly skitters, skitters over to where we stand, but soon replaces it right back where it had been. Oh, welcome to the Shanghai! May I take your order? She gives a deep bow, her well-delivered and professional introduction putting her in a good mood. It's a nice change from her no change from the norm for Yuko. Just tea, please. Hanako, Hisa? I'll have a slice of pie and a coffee. Just tea, please. Coming right up. Please take a seat. Any seat you wish. I'll be back shortly. Yugo gives a smile and a nod before shuffling to the counter, and we make our way to some empty seats by the window in quick measure. 
We slip into our seats, the girls on one side with Lily's cane propped up beside them and I on the other. I realize that Hanako is not doing something that she often does. Rather than keeping her eyes pinned to the ground and hiding behind her blind escort, busily, busily trying to convince herself that the world around her, them doesn't exist, she's merely keeping her eyes slow and helping Lily around. Are you okay, Lily? You look tired. She lowers her head a little, looking somewhat embarrassed that she let it show. Class representative work can be very tiring, considering that it often means dealing with the student council. Very tiring indeed. How do the other representatives go? Better than I, but not by much. Shizune is a harsh taskmaster with no, uh, no matter whom she deals with. It doesn't sound like you particularly relish the job. Why do you do it in the first place, if it's that bad? Being a class representative is enjoyable, and I can deal with the responsibility well enough. It's just that the people involved are sometimes... She trails off, cutting her words at a rather opportune spot. It's hard to imagine Lily cursing, but I imagine that if anyone could make her do so, it would be Shizune. Hanako looks to be withering a bit in the light of such conflict, but before I can steer the topic away a little, she stands up. Hanako. I'll be back in a bit. With that, she leaves for the restrooms. I suppose that's one way to deal with the situation, if that was indeed her motivation. Lily, however, looks a little wounded. Don't worry about it. I don't think it was on you. But... I think she's been getting stronger recently. You've seen it yourself, right? That went a bit awry. Fortunately, Lily doesn't look offended, but and by now I really should be shouldn't be quite so scared of stepping on that landmine around her. Possibly, sometimes I find it hard to tell though. Silence reigns for a moment between oh, between before two teacups, a pie, and a mug of steaming coffee appear in front of us. I notice that Yuko takes special care to place the teacup against the tip of Lily's fingers, letting her know where it is. Here you go. Thanks, Yuko. Thank you. With a quick and silent bow, she, the bespeckled waitress takes her leave. Ah, that's right. I was meaning to ask you something, and now would be the right time to do so. I'm all ears. Hanako's birthday is coming up, and I was hoping that you might accompany me for sh present shopping in the city this weekend. Hanako's birthday is soon? I suppose it would be a nice chance to cheer her up a bit. Like Yuko, she always seems to be teetering on the edge of either panic or depression. Or panic depression. And I've never seen her enjoy herself much outside of our chess games. All that aside, Learning the layout of the city better with a friend keeping me company sounds like a good way to spend a weekend. Sure, I'd be happy to. Have you got any plans for what to do for her birthday? A party or anything? Hanako being Hanako, perhaps a low-key affair would be. Lily suddenly cuts herself short, leaving me to wonder why as she brings her teacup to her lips and begins to sip. After a few seconds, I notice Hanako walking up to us over her shoulder. Lily's hearing must be very good indeed if it was the sound of the restroom door opening that tipped her off. Hanako takes her seat once again and wastes no time in drinking her tea. Soon, the three of us are quietly eating and drinking as the sun sets. It's a nice way to spend the remainder of the day's light, and it makes me appreciate the quiet and serene surroundings of Yamaku. I think I'm really beginning to like life here as isolated as it may be. I finish off the last of my coffee and rest the mug on the table while the girls talk between themselves. The coffee here is a little bitter for my taste, but still quite good. Better than what I can make for myself in any case. The girls' discussion is mainly focused on their respective reading preferences, which does give me a little curiosity about a related topic. Hey, Hanako, I was just wondering. Aside from the chess and reading, do you have any hobbies or anything you like doing? She's completely stopped in her tracks, 
looking quite surprised that anyone would be interested in a asking such a question about her. It takes her a little time to formulate a response. Um, I guess I like singing a little. I'm okay with computers as well, but I, I don't use them all that much. Singing's not exactly something I expected to hear. It's hard to imagine her singing voice given how soft-spoken she is. Lily, on the other hand, simply nods. She must already know all this since she's been friends with Hanako for one year or so by now. What about you? Me? She hesitates before quickly flicking her head up and down. It's only logical that she'd want to me to talk about my hobbies after she told me hers. There's chess, obviously, but also... Uh, there was soccer as well, though I can't really do that anymore. Reading, which I picked up in the hospital. Uh, this is surprisingly hard. Lily and Hanako look a little put off by the direction this is taking, and the more I think about it, the more I am, too. It sounds as if you've picked qu up quite a few things since your accident. Lily's candor is coated with probably the most positive spin one could put on what I said. Hanako, however, is silent. If a situation becomes difficult, her reaction always seems to be withdrawing into silence in order to prevent anything... things... getting worse. That, or physically retreating. A soft ringing gives us pause. As Lily reaches into her pocket, it becomes obvious that the sound is coming from her phone. Sorry. It's okay. Lily gives a quick nod before shuffling out of her seat and taking the call a little distance away to avoid disturbing the both of us. <laughs> Must be nice to be popular. Hanako smiles but doesn't take up the hook for further discussion. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, he so passes out and dies. His his coffee was drugged. You go <laughs> put some shit in it. Yeah. I end up just sitting back and closing my eyes, relaxing as best as I can. It's nice and peaceful here. I wonder what it'd be like to have grown up somewhere like this, rather than in the city. You come from the city? Looks like I found something she wants to talk about. Yeah, you could say I was a city kid through and through. It sounds like a lot changed. It did. I'm still not quite sure what to make of it all, though. It's a bit of a culture shock in more ways than one. You must have gone through something like this when you first arrived at Yamaku, right? I'd imagine most new students would. Not really. Hanako gazes a little to the side, looking, unwi looking unwillingly to go on. I tilt my head inquisitively, but a couple of seconds pass with no further answer. Mm. Dead angle though. Go, Dead go, angle go, though. Go. She's doing this on purpose. <laughs> Whoa. Uh. But can't we deal with that on Monday? The fallout has hardly settled from the last... I understand. I'll try to talk her down. You know what she's like when she gets locked onto an idea. Yes, thank you. I'll talk to you later then. Goodbye. Lily's conversation ends with the snapper of her phone closing. Dude, that flip phone though! <laughs> she returns to our table, but doesn't take her seat. Need to go? Unfortunately, class representative work calls once again. Uh, I can come with you. It's alright, Hanako. I'll just be going straight to the student council. There's no need to spoil a fine evening on my account. Besides, if you were to accompany me on my way back to the school, who would keep up whole Hisao company? Our? Ooh. Ooh. He's already made be like Hanako. You you have to share him, okay? Cause I cause I want I want a piece of that. He's so right. <laughs> oh, oh. He says like I'm not complaining. <laughs> please. Please. Uh Heart attack worth. <clears throat> I'm so fucking done. <laughs> uh, okay. I can join you for tea again later tonight if you'd like. I may well need it. 
We agree on that plan, and Lily says her farewells to the both of us, taking her cane after Hanako passes it to her. Despite my offer to pay for Lily's share, she insists on giving us her portion of the bill. Wait. I'm not gonna question it. Despite my she offer to pay- She just died and dashed! <laughs> Despite my offer to pay for Lily's share, she insists on giving us her portion of the bill and gives her regards to Yuko as she takes her leave. Oh wait, I see. No, never mind. She paid for it. Yeah, yeah. And then, we're alone. It may be all well and good to leave Hanako and me alone to have some time together, but all it typically means is the two of us sitting near each other in silence for a while. You know what he saw? Sometimes, that's all. that's all you need. Sometimes. Sometimes you just... Sometimes it's good, okay. Stop complaining. I wonder what I, what I must look like to Hanako. I never thought of myself as a scary person, but to have someone my own age acting this way around me makes me intensely self-aware, as if it's my fault that she's so troubled. She might get more used to people if she were to stop being so cloistered in Yamaku. But then again, when even people much older than her react so strongly after a single glance at her face, she may well feel the same way I do. It's a real catch-22. If she stays in Yamaku, she won't get used to socializing, but if she leaves, any efforts she might try would get thrown back at her by the people who can't deal with her scarring. Want to order something else to keep us going? We haven't had much of a dinner after all. Hanako brightens and nods vigorously, glad that I brought up the topic for her. I catch Yuko's gaze and she dutifully comes over to take our orders. Would you like something else? I'll just have a sandwich special and a hot chocolate. A bit late for coffee by now. Hanako? I'll have the same. With a nod and a bow, Yuko turns on the ball of her foot and returns behind the counter, where she busies herself fishing out bread and condiments and working the machine to make her drinks. Not a word is said between us until Yuko comes back. She smiles and give us, gives us our, our food and drinks before moving to a customer who called for her attention. I give up on the prospect of having much of a conversation with my companion and decide to just enjoy the meal small as it may be. It tastes nice, as does most of the food here. After having a few mouthfuls, I notice something's missing, namely, the sound of Hanako eating. Looking back to her, I see Hanako fidgeting a little behind her untouched sandwich. Not hungry? She shakes her head from side to side. Even as she does, the patch of hair she keeps over her right side of her face still does its job in hiding it almost entirely. It's, it's not that. Aw, I was all ready to have your share too. You looked troubled. Is something wrong? I'm startled by her thinking that I'm the one who looks troubled. But on second thought, she's probably right. My face may have given away my emotions without me noticing, and she's hardly a dim person. <laughs> Quite the opposite. We're friends, right? Friends. Why does she look so sad? Because she doesn't want to be friends. She wants to be more than friends. But he keeps dropping the F-bomb and she thinks that he's friend zoning her. Oh, no. From the tone of her voice and shrinking posture, it looks as though I've hit yet another landmine. This is another reason why interacting with her is difficult. The self-imposed psychological barrier she puts up between herself and others, including me, and most likely even Lily. It's a shame that... Uh, I think that, that we are. I'm a little taken off guard by Hanako's straightforward answer. All the more so sin since I was about to give up on getting any reply at all. I see. Uh, am I wrong? S sorry, I... Uh... No. No, 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 it's just hearing confirmation of that from you is really reassuring. To pick, on, uh, to pick up on what you said earlier, since coming to Yamaku, I've been a bit uneasy about how I should relate with others. 
I find myself chuckling a little. It's surprising how much of a relief that was. I can feel my face smiling as I pick up my cup of hot chocolate and bring it to my lips. Ah, that's hot. That's why... That's why I haven't eaten yet. I was waiting for my drink to cool down first. I guess I'll wait then. The both of us share a little chuckle. The situation isn't really that funny, but for some reason, it feels like laughing is the most natural thing to do right now. I guess we were both a bit wound up about each other. I was so busy thinking Hanako was the one with something wrong, it took her t to remind me that I was uneasy as well. But be that as it may, it still feels a little nice. A little nice to have someone thinking about me like that, in her own way. Aww. Following a long, quiet trudge up the hill and on t into the school grounds, the two of us find ourselves between the two dormitories. Regular night patrols pass between the male and female dormitory buildings, both for security and to quickly raise the alarm for any medical issues that may arise. The guard currently on duty notices us and gives us a quick nod as he continues on its way. A loud yawn escapes from Hanako's mouth before she has a chance to cover it. I have little doubt she's fairly tired by now. I'd better be off to my room then. See you tomorrow, Hanako. Good night. We separate, begin to walk our separate ways before I stop and look back. Hanako stands there, waving to me as she smiles. A smile and wave back to her, and after a few seconds, she turns and walks up the stairs to her dormitory building, disappearing through the door. These little moments we share between us feel like a small treasure. One thing is sure, I want to protect that small, delicate smile she so fleetingly wears around so few people. I wonder about these feelings I have when Hannah goes around, and when I'm able to do things for her, whether they may be the seed of something beyond what we share now. Hmm. Alright. Okay. The summertime sun is something to be savored, but when combined with the clean country air, it's all the better. The track and field club members are horsing around on the field ahead. Some are playing with a soccer ball, others are talking, and a few laugh as two of them mock fight with each other. None of them pay me any heed as I sit alone on the grass, underneath the shade of a particularly large tree. It's a nice and peaceful moment for after a dreary day of schoolwork. I played soccer pretty often before my heart attack, so I had thought it would be really nostalgic to watch them. What I'm feeling now, though, is quite distinct from that emotion. Hmm? Hey, It's, uh, what's her face? The... The, the newspaper club girl. Naomi? Naomi! I hear footsteps approaching from behind me and I turn to, uh, to my side to see one of my classmates taking a seat beside me. I'm taken off guard as the two of us haven't talked much before and I don't think anyone would notice me here. Oh, it's, oh, no, it's never Mickey. mind. It's Miki. Uh, it's the girl in the front row with the missing hand. I got you. Uh. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. It, it's okay. been a while since I've uh, yeah. since I've picked a new. Uh... Mm, I'm excited. Sup? Hi, uh, Mirua, wasn't it? Just call me Miki. Surnames are too stuffy. Uh, likewise, then. We both look back out to the field where the guys are playing. It looks like they're getting ready to have a second game, with people spreading out to their positions and the ball being carried to the center of the field. Sure enough, the whistle is blown to begin and the, ma the match, and they get right back into it. Not going to play? Nah, just gonna rest for a bit. What about you? You kinda look like you wanted to play when you were watching us before. So, someone did notice me after all. It's kind of a long story. Her face says that I've piqued her interest. I'm in Yamaku because I've got a heart condition. I can't really play soccer anymore. Wanted to be a soccer player, did you? No, no, no. I only really did it for fun. My friends played it, so I played it as well. Any of those guys playing around could have been me before my accident. 
but I don't feel like I have any real wish to go back to that either. It's a little hard to explain. I'm still decently physically built from the days when I played, even if my strengths largely left me by now, and I've got on well with the other club members. When I think about it, I should feel pretty bad watching people play when I can't anymore, yet I don't. Maybe it's a good thing, a sign that I've gotten over it and that I'm ready to become a new person. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. It's cool. I'm actually glad to hear that. Sounds like you really have your stuff together. Some of the people that come to Yamaku are pretty messed up at first. So, you're a member of the track and field club then? Yep, been in it since I first arrived. Don't suppose you're friends with Emmy? A short, fast runner, no legs. I don't think there are all that many female track and field members. <laughs> Emmy. Everyone knows about her, don't they? But nah, I tend to get on better with guys, so me and Emmy don't really talk much. Anyway, what about you? Oh, uh, well, I'm not really in any clubs. Real clubs, anyway. You've been hanging around with Hanako and that blonde Amazon, though, right? Blonde... Amazon... I suppose Lily has the height to fit that description. If nothing else, I nodded in response without making too fine a point of things. Then don't worry about it. As long as you got some friends, you don't need to join a club. A loud whistling from the field attracts her attention. One of the players is on the ground clutching his leg and the other stop play, uh, stop play to jog up to him, leaving Miki grimacing. Ugh, she still looks painful. That guy really has bad luck. As she continues to look out onto the field, I can't help being reminded of her own injuries. Her left arm, ending in a stump rather than a hand, has been bandaged up for the entire time I've been in Yamaku. Her injury doesn't seem that new. She turns to talk to me again and catches me looking. Both of us sit in awkward silence as she takes her bandaged arm and holds it in her lap with the other remaining hand. S sorry, I guess I'm still a bit... It's fine, really. Her tone is light, but neither of us says anything afterwards. Every disabled student here has their own way of dealing with their problems, and some finding their condition troublesome is only natural. I'm included among them, after all. The injured guide from the soccer game manages to get onto his feet with some help, and ends up hobbling off the field with one arm over the shoulder of another for support. Probably just pulled a muscle, if he can still manage to walk. The whistle blows again and the game continues once more, with one less man on the field. Hanging out with Hanako and that blonde girl, you keep some pretty strange company. How so? It's just that Hanako's kind of, I don't know. Shy? No, it's not really that, it's just she's got some issues, I think. I can't really put it in a nice way. Not that I don't think she's a nice person though, she's perfectly nice. Just. Hard to deal with. It sounds like Miki, or at least some other people in the class, have tried to get closer to Hanako in the past, and that it didn't go well. I think her judgment is rather harsh, given that everyone, not just those in Yamaku, have their own issues. Then again, I haven't known Hanako for that long, so it wouldn't surprise me if there were some other stuff I didn't know about. I'll just take it as it comes. She's a nice person, and I think that should be all that matters. Miki's eyes narrow a little, and she's, and her smile spreads. You really like her, don't you? <laughs> Miki certainly doesn't mince words. Fuck yes, we like her. Admit uh, why am that I gonna, shit. Why, why am I going to deny that? What, you're, you're with me on this one, right? We're not oh, going to yeah. deny. Admit. <sighs> That shit. Do it. Yes. To be completely honest, yeah, I do. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone, though. Hey, whoa, you can trust me. No problems there. To be honest, I think it's kind of cute. If you want to go for it, don't let me stop you. Well, will you be my side? Side, side bitch? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I kind of like it. you, too. Yeah. I'm down for anything. <laughs> Fuck yes! <laughs> Plus one to I'm, the Heiso harem! I am DTF, boy. <laughs> she as is long a, as I gotta. She, she is a part of the track and field. Amazon, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she is a part of the track and field. 
Yeah, we got a uh, shed over there if, uh, if you're interested. No! No butt stuff. No, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> she may say that, but she was just talking about Hanako having issues. Still, I want to hold myself to the words I said. Hanako's problem do don't matter. I'll deal with anything that comes up because I want to help her. If there's even the smallest possibility that I can pull Hanako out of her depression and seclusion, then I should work towards that, no matter what. If she needs a prince, then I'll be that prince. Whoa! Ooh, okay. So. All right, we're going there. <laughs> All right. Um. Mm -hmm. You can you can come save the day with your stallion, if you know what I mean. Oh, good lord. <laughs> How was I not gonna go there? That was that was good though. That was mm, that was you, you liked it. You liked it. Admit. Never. As I think about the possibility of a relationship, I can see Miki grinning at me while watching my face. I'm no doubt blushing, and looking away from her only makes her laugh. Miki gives off a different vibe from the other girls. Talking to her feels more like talking to a guy than a woman. She says she prefers male company. Doesn't help to dispel that notion either. No, he he said, you 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 sweet summer child. She likes male company for other reasons. Just sh <laughs> <laughs> glancing at my watch shows that lunch break is ending in only a few minutes. Time to start heading back to class. Lunch is about to end. Want to head back? Yeah, we'd better. I pick myself up off the grass and dust myself off, offering a hand to Miki to help her up as well. She takes it and easily pulls herself up, showing the muscles moving in her toned bare arms in the process. Come to think of it, why aren't you wearing the normal girl's blouse? Yeah, it's too hot and constricting. The boy's uniform is better anyway. She throws her arms around a bit to emphasize her point which has the side effect of showing off one particular part of her body that would be especially constricted by her Easy blouse. access! <laughs> He's like, oh my god, is he- <gasps> Ooh. I wonder- Like, he's looking! He is looking at the- the- the produce? He's, in the produce looking, aisle? And he's Co liking like, it. <laughs> So much more than any of the other arcs. Uh huh. Like he yeah, was very yeah. committed to Emmy, and he was very committed to Lily, and now all of a sudden we get, you know, um, you know, you keep, to be fair, I can't blame him. He's he's Lily is, mmm, so fine. But now this <laughs> random Miki girl, and he is he's not even hesitating to to check out the goods. Ah, he's just. Feast for the eyes. <laughs> the two of us start the walk back to the main building through the gardens, talking as we go. Sounds like you're settling in well. That's a relief. It was pretty surprising to get a transfer student at this point in the year, considering the exams are coming up. Don't remind me. Yeah, don't worry about them. Just cram it and you'll be fine. If that... you know what I mean. <laughs> Sounds like wonderful advice. I will take you up on that offer. All right. Let's Say go. Uh, 8 p.m. tonight. <laughs> Jesus. She claps my shoulder a couple of times as she grins. I don't think she takes school very seriously. You seem like a smart guy, and Muta's taking to you well already. You're like a hand in a glove. Now to work out whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I still don't know what to make of this school. I've been here a few weeks already, but I still feel dazed at times. Ah, you'll get used to it. Just give it some time. It's only a high school, just like any other. She makes it sound so simple, but I've never thought about it that way. To me, Yamaku symbolizes a marked shift in my life. I was no longer normal. I was different, and was to be educated with other different people. And yet, I'm walking back to class and talking casually with a classmate during lunch after watching some others play a soccer game. All perfectly normal. Maybe she has a point. Maybe I should just look at Hanako the same way. Everyone has their own issues. This is hardly something unique to Yamaku. After all, it's only a high school, just like any other. 
As we continued to talk, I found myself smiling. Miki and I are very different people in almost every way, but it feels good to have gotten to know another classmate a bit better. If that is the only time that we see her, I'm going to be really disappointed. We agree on that plan and Lily says, say, uh, rah, 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 rah. 